Curious George walks the pets. The man with the yellow hat was busy putting film in his camera. George sat and looked out the window. Their neighbor, Mr. Nelson, passed by. He was walking his dog, Andy. Sometimes Mr. Nelson had to run when Andy pulled him. What would it be like to walk a pet? George was curious. He waited until Mr. Nelson and his dog were back home. Then he went over to their house and rang the doorbell. Mr. Nelson didn't answer it, but the door was open, so George went in. Andy's leash was hanging on a hook. George tried to put it on him, but Andy leaped away. Then George discovered Mr. Nelson's other pets. He had a cat, a canary in a cage, and a goldfish in a bowl. Could George take all of them for a walk? He tried to put the leash on the cat, but she meowed and ran away. Next, George opened the birdcage, but the bird flew away. The cat jumped after the bird. Andy chased the cat. The bird flew around in circles, and the goldfish splashed in its bowl. What excitement! Suddenly, Mr. Nelson rushed in. What's going on? he yelled. George dropped the leash and ran out of the house. Now he was safe. Mr. Nelson tried to calm down his pets. He made Andy lie down. He patted the cat, put the bird back in its cage, and fed the goldfish. Then he went back to the kitchen. The coast was clear. George sneaked back to watch the pets. He was sure they would all like to go for a walk. How could George put a leash on a bird or a goldfish? Suddenly, George knew what to do. He ran back home, got his little red wagon, and pulled it over to Mr. Nelson's house. Then he put the birdcage in the wagon. Then he put the goldfish bowl next to it. Then he picked up the cat and put it in the wagon. But the cat jumped out when Andy came over to see what was going on. Quickly, George hooked the leash to the dog's collar. Then he tied the other end to the wagon. Andy could help him pull. Finally, they were ready, and off they went. The cat followed them. Now, George was walking all the pets down Garden Street. At the first house, Mrs. James' dog ran out and trotted behind the wagon. Then Mary O'Brien's cat fell in line, too. In no time, Mr. Klein's poodle, Mr. Finelli's beagle, Dr. Barnes' collie, and all the other pets in the neighborhood were following George. What a parade! But the neighbors didn't think so. Mr. Nelson came running after them. So did Mary O'Brien, and Dr. Barnes, and Mr. Klein, and Mrs. Finelli. Stop, stop, they shouted angrily. What are you doing with our pets? Bring them back. George was scared. What could he do now? Wait a minute, called Mrs. James from her doorway. Why are you angry with him? George is our pet walker. He can be a great help to us. Gee, that's right, said Mary O'Brien. I've read about pet walkers, but I never thought we could have one on Garden Street. George is doing a good job, too said Dr. Barnes. The pets are really behaving. A pet walker could save me a lot of time, said Mr. Klein. Just then, the man with the yellow hat came running over. Hold still, everybody, he shouted. I want to take a picture. Everybody smile. And so they did. George gets a pizza. Let's go out for supper tonight, George, said the man with the yellow hat, and we'll get some pizza. George was hungry. 
So off they went in their little blue car and drove to the pizza parlor. Tony, the baker, was behind the counter getting the pizzas ready for baking. First, he flattened out a ball of dough into a large pancake. Then he tossed it in the air, spread the tomato sauce, sprinkled it with cheese, and shoved it in the oven. So that's how a pizza is made. Could he do it? George was curious. The telephone rang. The guard at the shoe factory wants a large pizza in a hurry, called Tony's wife. I'll get my coat, said Tony, and went into the back room. George jumped up on the counter, grabbed a big ball of dough, made four little balls, and pounded each one into a pancake just as Tony had done. Now he was ready to toss them into the air. How good that George was a monkey. He tossed them with all four hands. One landed on a coat rack. Another plopped right in the middle of a customer's table. One fell on the jukebox. And one went smack over the owner's head just as he came back into the room. Who did that, shouted Tony. Where is he, asked someone else. It's that monkey, a customer answered. In the alley was a small truck with the back door open. George jumped in. Now he was safe. You'd better hurry, said Tony's wife. The guard is still waiting for his pizza. They'll be closing the gates in a few minutes. I forgot all about it, said Tony. He got a pizza from the oven and packed it in a box. Then he left and put it in the back of the truck and drove off. George was trapped inside. The truck rattled through the streets up to the shoe factory. It was too late. The gates were locked. Oh no, said Tony, how will I ever deliver the pizza? He opened the back door and there was George. So that's where you've been hiding, cried Tony. I'm angry with you. You've been fooling around with my pizzas. He grabbed George by the arm. Suddenly, he stopped. I've got an idea, he said. You can make up for all that trouble. Take this pizza, climb up the gate, and deliver it to the guard at the back door. How good that George was a monkey. <laughs> Look at that, shouted the guard. A monkey delivering my pizza. Boy, am I hungry. When George got back to the truck, Tony shook his hand. I'm going to make a special pizza for you when we get back. And that's what he did. George and his friend, the man with the yellow hat, ate a large pizza, thanked Tony, and drove back home in their little blue car. Curious George plays basketball. George, said the man with the yellow hat, Jimmy is playing basketball at school today. Why don't you go with him and watch? George and Jimmy walked to the school gym. George looked around in the gymnasium. What a nice place for a monkey to swing and play. Who's that fellow with you? Asked Mr. Nicholas, the coach. This is my friend George, Jimmy said. He came to watch the game. Okay, said Mr. Nicholas. I'll have to get a whistle. I lost my own. Looks like your team needs one more player. Bobby is sick. I'll hold on to his uniform. Couldn't George take his place, Mr. Nicholas? Asked Jimmy. Mr. Nicholas looked at George. I don't see why not, he said, and walked off. Put on Bobby's uniform, George, said Jimmy and he went to the court. George got dressed. Suddenly, he stepped on something hard. It was the coach's lost whistle. George picked it up. Soon, the coach came back with a new whistle. 
Let's get started, he called. When I blow twice, the game starts. When I blow once, the game stops. George was listening. Both teams took their positions. Jimmy's team wore red. The other team wore blue. Mr. Nicholas blew twice, and the game started. One red player passed the ball, and Jimmy got a basket. The crowd cheered. Now George blew his whistle once. The game stopped. Then George blew his whistle twice. And the game started again. What's going on? shouted the coach. Who's blowing that whistle? He was angry. Maybe that little monkey, said one of the players. Yeah, said another player. Sounds like George is at it again. There he is, yelled someone else. George was scared. It was time to get away. He ran across the court, climbed up a steel girder, and hid behind the backboard. The game went on. It was nearly the end of the game. There were only a few seconds left. Jimmy's team needed one more basket to win. Jimmy dribbled the ball in closer to the basket. The blue team tried to stop him. Time was running out. Shoot the ball, Jimmy, they shouted. Jimmy aimed carefully and shot. The ball went high, but the shot was not good enough. George knew what to do. Quickly, he jumped down, just in time to grab the ball and shoot it into the basket. The crowd cheered. Hooray for George, shouted Jimmy. We won. Then the coach came over. You've caused enough trouble, he shouted. Give me back that whistle. But coach, said Jimmy, George was the one who helped us win. Come to think of it, he did, said Mr. Nicholas, and he smiled. Good work, George. Time to go home, George, said the man with the yellow hat. George can play here any time, said the coach, but I'll do the whistling. Then George and his friend got in their little blue car and drove off. George and the little dog. It was time for George to get up and have breakfast with his friend, the man with the yellow hat. George got out of bed and went to the kitchen. But the man wasn't there. George looked into the living room. Nobody there. Then he went into the study. Nobody there either. So George went back to the kitchen and had breakfast alone. But where was his friend? Why wasn't he home? Maybe he was angry at George. After all, George did cause some trouble lately. He did turn on the hydrant. He did cause trouble at the concert and more trouble at the ranch. So George decided to leave home. He packed his little bag and left. He walked down the street. No one was around. Uh, that is, almost no one. A little scruffy dog with a curled tail was following George. George kept walking, and so did the dog. They came to a park where mothers were sitting and talking while their children were riding tricycles or swinging on the high bar. Suddenly, George felt something scratch at his leg. It was the scruffy little dog. He wanted to play with George. A boy got off his tricycle and went to the water fountain. 
George quickly got on the tricycle, and so did the little dog. They rode over to the high bar. Children were lining up to swing from one end to the other. George got off the tricycle, sneaked up front, and climbed up the ladder and began to swing. Why didn't you wait your turn, yelled a girl. Get down from there, shouted another. It was time to get away. George jumped down, and the two of them ran off. In the middle of the park was a gazebo. People were listening to the music. A man was playing a strange-looking instrument. George and his friend were listening, too. They began to dance. Isn't that cute, said a woman. A monkey and a dog doing the polka. Why don't we try, too, said a man. And they got up and started to dance. Soon, all the people were dancing. They were having a wonderful time. That is, until the children came running over. That's the monkey who took my tricycle, shouted one of them. And he pushed in front of us on the high bar, said a girl. The musician came over. Just a moment, he said. I've been playing for an hour, but if it wasn't for these two, nobody would have had any fun. Children, leave George and his friend alone, said a man. And leave us alone, too, added a woman. We're having a great time making new friends. And I finally found my friend, said the man with the yellow hat, coming through the crowd. You were still asleep, George, when I went to the post office. When I came home, you were gone. Then he picked up George. Let's go home, he said. They waved goodbye to everyone, got into their little blue car, and drove off with the little scruffy dog. Curious George goes to an art show. Let's go to the art show this afternoon, George, said the man with the yellow hat. I hear they've got some good paintings. After lunch, they got into their little blue car and drove off. I see a friend over there, George, said the man. You can stay here and watch the artists paint, but don't get into trouble. Some artists had started their pictures. One artist was painting a bowl of fruit, and another was painting some flowers. Still another was sketching lines and circles and squares. Soon, George got tired of watching and climbed a tree. Look, said a painter, what an unusual subject, a monkey in a tree. That's what I'm going to paint. After a while, George climbed down and looked at the painting of the bowl of fruit. The artist wasn't there. George took the brush and put some paint on the picture. Then he went over to the next painting. This artist was talking to a friend. George added his own touch. Next came the painting with the circles and the squares. This one needed a lot of work. George picked up some brushes. Then he dipped them into the paint and went to work. Now George was a real painter. You're ruining my canvas, shouted a woman. She was angry. It was time to get away. George climbed back up the tree and hid in the branches. Now he was safe. I'll have to tell the chairman, said the angry woman. And off she went. Now the coast was clear. George started swinging back and forth, back and forth. Soon the woman came back with the chairman. There he is. That's the monkey, she shouted. The other artist rushed over. He messed up my work, cried one of the painters. Mine too, shouted another painter. Somebody catch him before it gets worse, yelled another one. George was surrounded. The artists were angry. They were shaking their fists at him. George looked around. He was trapped. Below were the judges walking up and down, examining each painting carefully. Which painting would win? George was curious. Finally, a judge reached for one of the paintings that George had worked on. Look here, he said. A most excellent work. 
the best in the show. It deserves the blue ribbon. Where is the artist? Here I am, said the woman. The judge turned around. Superb, he said. Congratulations. Just a moment, said the woman, and pointed to the tree. Please come down, George. Everything is all right. The woman turned to the judges. He's the one who helped me finish the painting. Shouldn't he get a blue ribbon, too? Of course, said the chairman. And he put a ribbon on George. Everyone clapped and cheered. The man with the yellow hat came over. I'm glad to see you didn't get into any trouble. And guess what? I bought a painting. How do you like it? They got in their little blue car and drove home. Curious George at the ballet. George was excited. The man with the yellow hat was taking him to the theater to see their friend Pedro, who was a dancer. If you hurry, George, said the man, we can visit Pedro before he goes on stage. Inside the theater, all the dancers were getting ready. Some were lacing up their ballet slippers. Some were exercising at the bar. And there was Pedro. He was wearing short pants and a shirt with patches all over it. We are dancing the story of Jack and the Beanstalk tonight, and I'm playing Jack, Pedro said. First, I will plant these magic beans in the ground, and then, when the beanstalk grows, I'll climb up to the sky. Let me show you. Lying on the ground was a long, thick piece of green cloth. Suddenly, the cloth began to rise right to the top of the theater. Now it was a giant beanstalk with green leaves. How did that happen? George was curious. He saw the man in the black jacket at the top of the stage. I am just testing the magic beanstalk for our dance, the man said. After Pedro plants the magic beans, I will pull this wire and the people in the audience will think the beanstalk is really growing. By this time, the audience was seated, and the orchestra began to play. Oh my, said the man in the black jacket. I'd better put the beanstalk back down to the ground. They're almost ready to begin. It was time for George to take his seat in the audience. On his way, he saw a big painted mask. George was curious. He lifted it up and put it over his head. It was so big that it covered him right to his toes. It was dark inside. George couldn't see where he was going. Then he heard people laugh. George had walked on stage just as Pedro began to dance. The people in the audience were laughing so hard that Pedro had to stop. George, he whispered, get off the stage. I'm in the middle of my dance. George pushed off the mask and ran up the ladder to the top of the stage. Pedro had started to dance again. Now Pedro was planting the magic beans. George was watching. Then he noticed the man in the black jacket. The man looked as if he was in trouble. The wire from the magic beanstalk had broken. George, he said, I'm so glad you're here. I need your help. Climb down to the back of the stage and grab the top of the beanstalk. You can wear my black jacket so no one will see you. How good that George was a monkey. Quickly, he went down the curtain, grabbed the beanstalk, climbed back up, and handed the beanstalk back to the man. Now, Pedro could climb right to the top. The audience here. Bravo! Bravo! When the curtain was down, Pedro turned to George. You saved the show, he said. Thanks a lot. When the curtain went up again, there was George in his black jacket taking a bow with Pedro. Hooray for Pedro, the audience shouted. And hooray for George. The man with the yellow hat clapped the loudest of all.
Curious George goes sledding. Today would be a good day to try our new sled, George, said the man with the yellow hat. Let's go up to the hill. But they got in their little blue car and drove off. I want to say hello to an old friend, George, said the man. You can climb up to the top with the sled and see what's going on. But don't get into trouble. At the top of the hill, Mr. and Mrs. Ramirez were watching their three children playing in the snow. Lisa and Paula were making a snowman. Their little brother, Jimmy, was watching. They were rolling a big ball to make the bottom of a snowman. George wanted to make his own snowman. He started to roll a snowball. It got bigger and bigger. Until it was so big that George couldn't see over it. Watch out, George, called Mr. Ramirez. You're getting close to the edge of the hill. But George was so busy rolling the heavy snowball that suddenly he pushed it over the edge. The ball rolled down the hill, turning faster and faster, gathering more snow as it went. Watch out, someone cried. It's an avalanche. Some skiers flipped over. A boy on a sled got covered with snow. It's that monkey up there, shouted someone. Get him out of here. He saw a snow fence, jumped over, and hid behind it. Now no one could see him. George was safe. He peeked out. There was Jimmy all alone. He was trying to climb on a sled. The sled started to slide toward the edge of the hill. In a moment, he would go right over. Jimmy shouted his mother, get off that sled. But she was too far away and Jimmy couldn't hear her. But George knew what to do. He ran toward the sled and jumped on right behind Jimmy. With two hands, he held on to the boy and with the other two, he steered the sled. Just then, George saw a tree stump. They were heading straight towards it. George held Jimmy close to him and steered clear of the stump. Mr. and Mrs. Ramirez, Lisa and Paula, came running down the hill. Jimmy, are you all right, cried Mrs. Ramirez. Sure he is, shouted Lisa. George is with him. <laughs> Jimmy just laughed. He thought it had been lots of fun. There's that monkey who knocked me down, shouted the boy. He got in our way too, yelled a skier. Leave him alone. He saved my little boy, said Jimmy's father. I think George is a hero. Good work, cried Paula, and they all clapped and cheered. I guess you're right, said the boy. Now that you're a hero, George, I'll let you have a ride on my sled. Just then, the man with the yellow hat heard the cheers and rushed over. So there you are, George, said the man. How would you like to give me a ride now? And it was clear sledding from then on. Curious George goes to the aquarium. Let's visit the new aquarium, George, said the man with the yellow hat. You've never been to one. They got into their little blue car and drove off. The manager of the aquarium met them at the door. Why don't you come with me? I'm going to feed the seals now. The manager took a pail full of fish and went to the tank. Up, Billy, up, he called. Billy, the big seal, jumped straight into the air and caught the fish. George was fascinated. Now do a twist, said the manager. And Billy did a twist. Then he jumped up and caught another fish. George was watching. But only a few people were in the audience. The next show will be at 2 p.m., folks, said the manager. George wandered off. 
Now he was behind the fish tanks filled with all different kinds of fish. Leaning against the tank was a net on a long pole. And on the floor was an empty pail. Could George feed the seals too? He was curious. He took the pole, went to the tank, and dipped it into the water. He caught lots of fish. And soon the pail was full. Just then, a guard walked down the hall. He stared at the tank. Hey, what's going on, he shouted. He blew his whistle. Guards came running from all directions. There he is, cried one of the guards. Somebody catch him. Stop him, shouted another guard, and ran after George. George was scared. He headed for the seal tank, dived right in, and landed on the back of the seal. Look, a monkey, someone shouted. The crowd clapped and cheered. With a twist of its head, the seal flipped George high into the air. Another seal caught him. Soon all the seals swam over. They wanted to flip George too. Wow, the audience cried. George flipped into the air and the seals took turns catching him. It was the best show the audience had ever seen. Finally, George landed on the trainer's platform. Suddenly, a hand reached out and grabbed George by the ear. It was the guard. George was trapped. The manager rushed over. Wait, he said, let him go. But he was fishing in our tank, said the guard. Never mind, said the manager. He made up for it by putting on a good show. How would you like a job in the SEAL show? I don't think he's quite ready for that, said the man with the yellow hat. George and the man with the yellow hat thanked the manager and drove off in their little blue car. Here's to George, the curious little monkey. He's so full of curiosity. Here's to George, the curious little monkey. He's as curious as curious can be. Curious George rides a pony. George, said the man with the yellow hat, today is the pony race at the country fair. Let's go. So off they drove in their little blue car. Look, George, said the man, there's my friend, Mr. Finelli. I'm glad you came, said Mr. Finelli, but I'm worried. It's almost time for the race to begin, but my son Nino is not here. He is supposed to ride Star. I have to look for him. I'll come with you, said the man with the yellow hat. You stay here, George, but don't get into trouble. When they were gone, George picked up some hay and gave it to Star. The pony ate it right out of George's hand. Then Star reached down and licked his face. George had made a friend. At the starting line, the riders were getting their ponies ready. The starter was waving to Mr. Finelli. Finelli, I want to talk to you, he shouted. I see an empty space in the line. Where's your son? Uh, he'll be here any minute, said Mr. Finelli. Uh, could you wait a little longer? Absolutely not, shouted the starter. When I wave this flag, the race begins. Mr. Finelli walked Star to his place. He was worried. George was watching. While the starter was busy looking through his binoculars, George climbed up to the platform and waved to his friend. But his friend wasn't looking. So George picked up the starter flag and waved it back and forth and back and forth. 
Maybe the man would see him now. The riders saw the flag, but they thought it was the signal to start the race. They were off, and Star was off too, without a rider. The starter turned to George. What did you do? He shouted. You messed up my race. George was scared. He jumped down from the platform, ran along the track, and climbed up a tree. Now he was safe. The ponies were racing down the track. Star was last. When he passed under the tree, George jumped down and landed right on his back. Star ran faster now. George and Star passed the other ponies one by one. There was the finish line. Only one pony was still ahead of them. Star ran faster and faster. Now he was neck and neck with the other pony. Hooray! They passed the last pony and won the race. The crowd cheered. Mr. Finale and the man with the yellow hat came running over. You did it, shouted Mr. Finale. Star licked George's face again. Then the starter of the race came over. You shouldn't have waved my flag, George, he said. But you did win the race. Then he gave George the cup. The crowd clapped and cheered. There's one thing you forgot, George, said Mr. Finale. And he gave him a piece of sugar. George knew just what to do. We need some things for dinner, George, said the man with the yellow hat. It was very crowded. The manager looked worried. What's the matter, asked the man. Most of my checkout girls didn't come in today, he said. I don't know who's going to help pack the groceries. A boy with an apron was pushing some empty carts. You can look around while I do the shopping, George, said the man. See if there's anything special you want, but don't get into trouble. The boy was pushing the carts down the aisle. It looked like a train. How could George make his own train? He was curious. There were lots of empty carts. George started to push them down the aisle. Whee! It was a train. Up one aisle and down the other. He pushed the carts harder and harder. It would be more fun if the train could go even faster. But they were rolling straight toward the front door. Don't let those carts go down the ramp, cried the manager as he saw them rolling by. The shopping carts rolled out the door down a little ramp and into the parking lot. Then they went clattering in every direction. One hit a car. One hit a lamppost. One bounced onto the sidewalk. People had to get out of the way. Stop that monkey, shouted the manager. Someone grab him, yelled a customer. George was scared. <laughs> A side door was open, and George ran into the storeroom. A white apron and a hat were hanging on a hook. George put them on. Now he looked just like one of the workers. In the supermarket, people were pushing their carts up and down the aisles. George walked past the checkout counter. Hey, you, I need some help, cried the cashier. And she pulled him up to the counter. 
start packing. How good that George was a monkey. He packed groceries into the bags with all fours. The girl pushed more groceries at him. Better hurry up, she said. There's a long line. George packed little bags, big bags, boxes and cases. Now the line was moving faster. We're getting good service now, said a lady. I never got through so fast, said a man. I've got you this time, shouted the manager, and he grabbed him. What are you doing, sir, asked the cashier. All our customers are so pleased. He's the best packer we've ever had. He is, asked the manager. George kept packing. And the line got shorter and shorter. The manager smiled and turned to him. You shouldn't have played with those cards, he said, but you sure did make up for it. The man with the yellow hat finally got to the checkout counter. Good work, George, he said. Looks like you've been pretty busy. He sure has, said the manager, and gave them a big bunch of bananas. Save one for dinner tonight, said the man, as they drove off in their little blue car. <laughs>